Hi everyone, I wanted to talk to you today a little bit about heart disease. So many people describe this kind of as a generic condition that they have, but we really have to break it down to understand what is going on exactly. And it's important for you to understand too, what it is exactly in your body is the source of the problem. So a few terms that you should get to know if you've had heart disease. So maybe you've been diagnosed with a heart attack and you had to go to St. John or a local hospital where you had an angiogram done. So an angiogram is a dye test of your heart and what it does, it's looking for any blockages or narrowing in the blood vessels. Many people know they've had stents put in before. So a stent is basically a little metal tube that goes in to hope open up the blood vessel itself. Uh, the one thing you need to know with having stents or having a dye test is that if stents are put in and blockages are corrected, that this is a mechanical issue, okay? I tell people this a lot, that if you go and you have a few stents put in, great, that's wonderful that your blockages are opened up, but you still have to work on lifestyle issues so that you don't develop more blockages again, okay? So an important thing to know. Also, if you've had stents done before, it's really important to know where they were in your heart. So most facilities will give patients a copy of the, the report that will show them where the blockages had been around their heart. But at the same time, most doctors will also do a test that's called an ejection fraction. Um, basically, the heart squeezes. We know that. We feel our pulse rate. You know, we can feel that beat inside our chest. Uh, it doesn't squeeze out every single drop of blood when it beats. Roughly 55 to 60% of the blood squeeze out with a pulse, and that's what's called your ejection fraction. Now, many people that have a heart attack, that ejection fraction number goes down. Uh, for people that have advanced heart disease, sometimes I see it in 15, 20%. With mild disease, sometimes it's 45 or 50%. But it's important for you to understand what, to know what your number is and to understand what that means. The number can be improved both through medications and again through lifestyle measures. Uh, the next is um, an EKG. So that's a tracing of our heart. You know, often it's the first thing that you have done. Um, if you come into the emergency room, for example, and you're having any type of chest pain, they put the electrodes on your chest. So if you have had any problems with your heart before, it's really important to get a copy of your electrocardiogram, especially if you're a person that travels. Um, an ECG can help us quickly determine if there's any changes that would signify that you're having angina or another heart attack. And with the digital age of telephones, you could simply snap a picture and then you always have that record on hand. Another important part with heart disease is people that actually have had atrial fibrillation. This is a very common condition. The chamber of the heart, the atrium, beats much faster than the bottom chamber of the heart. So it's important for you to know this. Many people will say, oh, I have an irregular heartbeat, but you need to know how to distinguish what that is. Atrial fibrillation puts you at risk for stroke. Um, so generally, people that have atrial fibrillation will be some, on some type of blood thinner to prevent stroke from happening in their body. But also, from a prevention standpoint, we know that screening for things like sleep apnea, like low magnesium levels, I've seen them as being risk factors for atrial fibrillation. So important to know if that is your condition. The other irregular heartbeat that we see a lot are something called PVCs, or preventricular contractions. So often people feel this, they feel like a little flutter in their chest, maybe when they get stressed or anxious, or maybe when they drink too much coffee. Um, but PVCs can be a sign of more serious illness in the heart, though the majority of the time we see it brought on by stress and by caffeine. So if you do happen to have irregular beats and you've seen your physician, perhaps they did a Holter monitor on you where you wore a pack for 24 hours, if PVCs were what you were having, then you should again start to look at the lifestyle at, um, measures that you may need to do to reduce that. So again, stress, regular walking and exercise, looking at the foods that you're eating, looking at, you know, caffeine, coffee, uh, coffee, you know, chocolate, ice caps, energy drinks, those sorts of things, because those are the most important things that can bring on PVCs. So heart disease really, it takes on a very wide spectrum. So it's hard to review everything at this point, but the key things I want you to know is that if you have been diagnosed, understand what that means.
You know, WebMD is a great source of information. Also, the Mayo Clinic has a great source of information and also the Canadian Heart and Stroke Foundation. So the key things to remember, know your condition, know what your ejection fraction is if you've had heart disease, know what your were if you had to go to a center where you had a dye test done and then remember if you've had disease then you really have to think you don't want that disease coming back again you have to look at the lifestyle measures that you can do to change it and to prevent any further damage we know that heart disease can be reversed it is true I see heart function uh, improved all of the time but it comes through nutrition through exercise through moving the body and through stress reduction so think about that and I hope you have a healthy and happy day.